This is Dave, and I'm here with Ethan, and together we are Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast, episode 151-inch. On this episode, we interview Eric Berlin and Joe Bohannon, two puzzle makers with a unique connection to Weird Al. It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. It's a podcast about Weird Al. It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. Seriously, the whole podcast is about Weird Al. It's Dave and Ethan's you don't have to listen, but we're glad you are. What a crazy episode last episode was, huh, Ethan? Well, I'll say, on episode 150 inch, we unearthed not one, but two interviews with Weird Al Yankovic, and yet, all anyone could talk about was whether the Discover Darwin ad was about extra warm house-made Cheddar Bay biscuits, or Extra warm house made cheddar bay biscuits. Ah! I couldn't believe all the discussion around the extra warm house made cheddar bay biscuits. I thought it was pretty obvious that, well, uh, you know what? It's up to you to decide. Yeah, obviously. And you know what else is obvious? It's obvious that it's time for what's happening in Weird Al related news. Big news dropped yesterday. Weird Al and American Greetings have teamed up for an incredible e-card called the Weird Al Yankovic Birthday Smash-Up. The website claims that there are 1,000 name options. Just select the name and age and a fully personalized video and song will play starring Weird Al. Weird Al will wish you a happy birthday by name. And there's a barbershop quartet and a gospel choir, a big birthday cake. Oh, it is truly pretty stinking majestic. And as you can imagine, for the obsessive Weird Al fan community, this opens up a major can of worms. Should we count each variation as his own Weird Al song or what? Well, they claim there are 1,000 names and there are 120 age options. So that would suggest that there are 120,000 possible options. And don't worry, listeners. We have already tied our intern Frank to a wall and are forcing him to watch each and every combination just to be sure. And while Frank makes his way through all those videos, we had a few questions on just how a completionist like Dave and myself should handle this colossal windfall of new material. So who better to ask than the person behind the Weird Al encompassing song list and the foremost expert when it comes to archiving and cataloging Weird Al songs and music, as well as a fellow collector of rare and unreleased Weird Al tunes. So without further ado, please welcome Johnny O'Hearn. Here's Johnny. How you doing, Johnny? What's up? Well, it's an incredible thrill to be shedding some light on this new development. Thank you very much for having me. I have to admit, as soon as I saw this news, when Al tweeted out a link, at first I was so excited, and then my second thought was, oh no, what's Johnny going to think? <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is, is that I was thinking, oh, what are they thinking I'm thinking? <laughs> <laughs> and now you're going to know. And I'm just kind of like chill about it. Like, I think some people expected me to literally write down a thousand or so different entries. And I'm treating this more like a STEM file. For instance, some may recall that My Own Eyes has a downloadable content a file on Rock Band. I can't keep up. There's so many of those games. But there's a My Own Eyes Rock Band stem. <laughs> and imagine if there was a variation for every single time you played a note wrong on just one of the instruments on there. That would be baffling. And uh, a Herculean task. And I'm just not interested in that. So I just wrote down that it exists as like a stem file. And now with the two, for lack of better terms, uh, drop down menus, you have 1,831 names in the drop down menu uh, by my count. And then I wow. painstakingly <laughs> went through the whole list of names and omitted anything that was a variation of a spelling, like different ways of saying Kelly or Jamie, stuff like that. And that was 512 names. Well, I saw there's Ethan with an A-N and Ethan with an E-N, but it sounds the same yeah, when you say yeah. it out loud. And uh, those really exist just for the visual difference of the names on the screen. So audio-wise, 
I, I just don't care. That's that's Frank's problem if he wants that stuff. But <laughs> for the just the audio differences, by my estimation, there is a hundred and fifty six thousand nine hundred and sixty one different audio combinations because of the drop down menu for the age choices and the names combined. That's just too much. Wow. And I'm comfortable <laughs> just listing that this service exists and maybe listing the individual choices per drop down menu, but I can't say this is 156,961 songs. I'm obsessive, but I'm also sane. Now, if someone was to collect all of them on their own, hey, by all means, go for it, and uh, please send me a zip file. I would love to listen to them. I just don't <laughs> want to record them on my own. Uh, and of course, please give your money to the appropriate rights holders and uh, uh, various stakeholders in this release's success, of course. But uh, it, it's just not going to be me. I have a full-time job and uh, stuff. You know, stuff gets uh, a little demanding. Yeah, I don't blame you, Johnny. That's a really big task to do all that. But I think I have a possible solution. All we need to do is get 156,961 of our listeners to each record one variation and then compile them all together and we'll have a master list. Wow. Great idea, Dave. We could. So Johnny, one thing I thought that was interesting is while I was scrolling through the list of names, I noticed a few kind of Easter egg and funny ones. I noticed like Lady Gaga was on the list and Emo. Did you notice any strange or special names on the list while you were going through them? Uh, yeah, those were two that caught my eye. I noticed Bermuda. I noticed Sir Paul, RuPaul. I also caught a few people from... You know, Weird Al's touring crew. I saw Hawkeye. I saw JW. And Dave, I, I don't know if this has to do with you, but I saw Elvis as one of the options as well. <laughs> it very well could be a shout out to myself. Although I did see the name Dave listed as well, as well as David. And I did see the name Ethan. And I did also see the name Frank, though I'm pretty sure that's not for our intern Frank. Because nobody would want to ever wish him a happy birthday. We don't even know when his birthday is. Yep, never bothered to ask, never cared. <laughs> I also, I saw Dweezil was on there. Uh, of course, uh, maybe a reference <laughs> to Dweezil Zappa. Beyonce was on there. Swampy, Whoopi. And then I saw there was both a Ruben and a Ruben. And, and take it from me, he pronounces them differently and correctly. <laughs> And there's also a really nice special Easter egg. If you click on the name Al, you'll see that Weird Al gestures to himself as he says his name. <laughs> now, if anyone listening finds any other fun names or Easter eggs or Johnny as you're going through the list, definitely let us know and maybe even leave us a special 347 spatula hotline message. If you want to send your very own special birthday wish to somebody, head on over to AmericanGreetings.com and click on Weird Al Yankovic Birthday Smash Up. Johnny, thank you so much for joining us and shedding light on this very exciting new development in the Weird Al universe. Well, thank you very much for having me. Can't tell you how much it's been an incredible thrill to be on Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast. A huge thanks to Johnny O'Hearn. Be sure to check out his incredible list of every Weird Al song or musical appearance ever, the Weird Al Encompassing Song List, over at WeirdAl.info. Weird Al has announced yet another concert for the unfortunate return of the ridiculously self-indulgent, ill-advised Vanity Tour. The tour will stop at Indian Ranch in Webster, Massachusetts on Friday, August 5th. And back in last December, August 5th was originally announced as being in the city of Northampton, Massachusetts, but without much warning, that date was removed and now apparently replaced with this new location, which is about an hour away. There's not yet an indication on the venue's website for when tickets go on sale for this new tour date, but the CID Entertainment page have VIP packages listed as going on sale Saturday, March 26th. It's recently surfaced that Weird Al will be appearing in a brand new upcoming horror movie. That's right, the film is called It Wants Blood 2 and is being directed by James Balsamo. 
According to IMDb, Weird Al's character name is Melvin Baldron, and some of his co-stars include Coolio and WWE Hall of Famer Rikishi. We will share more information about this film as soon as we get more information. And speaking of films that include Weird Al, Scott Barber's documentary This Is Guar, which includes commentary from Weird Al himself, will be making its East Coast premiere at the Florida Film Festival, which runs April 8th through 17th. And if you haven't already or just want a refresher, be sure to check out Dave Neathan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast, episode 126-inch, where we talk to Scott all about the documentary and Weird Al's involvement. Our good friend and Patreon supporter Summer Woods added some pretty stinking majestic posters to her Bandcamp page, including one for her Weird Al tribute album, Chihuahua Hat. Now, you might remember that besides the awesome cover tunes and piano medleys that are contained on this album, the cover art is a homage to Weird Al's Poodle Hat album cover art. And among the people riding the subway, you'll find both Ethan and myself. Head on over to Summer's Bandcamp page at summerwoods1.bandcamp.com to pick up the new 12-inch by 12-inch poster, as well as Summer's full catalog of music. All purchases of the poster include an autograph or custom message and unlimited streaming of Chihuahua Hat and high-quality downloads. Yo, Kiro Burrito Burrito! This episode is brought to you in part by vegan burrito restaurant Burrito Burrito in Troy, New York, home of the two-pound double-wrapped in a quesadilla Burrito Burrito and Wizard Burger in Albany, New York. Come on down to Burrito Burrito and Burrito Burrito, your Burrito Burrito, or hop on over to Wizard Burger for mouth-watering loaded, dare I say, beefy vegan burgers. From Troy to Albany to your anus, Burrito Burrito and Wizard Burger feed the hungry with out-of-this-world, plant-based, real food, always vegan style. Visit burritosquared.com and wizardburger.com to order ahead. All right, now it's time for what's happening in Grammy Award winning Jim Kimo West related news. Jim Kimo West and Josh Jaffe's long awaited album, Ahum Akua, is now taking pre orders. The album is scheduled to drop on May 6th, but why wait? Be sure to pre order it now, wherever fine music is sold. And all pre orders include four tracks of Bell for instant download. What a deal! Well, it sure was a puzzle figuring out the 156,961 song options. And the, um, let's see, carry the 27, uh, 220,080 combinations of possible e-greeting cards. But our next guests have an interesting puzzle of their own. Dave and I are very excited to have two Weird Al fans joining us today. Eric Berlin and Joe Bohannon. Eric is an author and puzzle maker who created a crossword puzzle with Weird Al for the New York Times crossword. And Joe is a PhD mathematician who had a part in something really exciting that we're going to talk about. So please welcome Eric and Joe. How's it going, guys? Fine. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, same here. Yeah, thanks for having me on. It's really exciting to get to talk to both of you, and you guys actually have both worked with Weird Al, maybe together, maybe in separate occasions. I'd love if you could just kind of tell us a little bit about, before we get into that, your background as Weird Al fans. I am a Weird Al fan, but I'm not sure I could touch the hem of anybody else in this call. <laughs> uh, I have yet to see him in concerts, uh, much less meet him. Both those things are going to happen later this year for the first time. I'm very excited. Um, but I, I mean, he was a favorite of mine, um, from childhood on. And, uh, when, uh, the New York Times started, uh, pairing celebrities with, uh, uh, with constructors to do these, uh, partnerships for the, for the crossword in, in, in the Times, um, I was not invited to that party, but I kind of <laughs> wanted to crash it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I, I was, I was thinking who would I pair myself with? given the opportunity. And I remembered seeing in a, um, in a Weird Al biography, I think it might've been behind the music on VH1, just a random picture of uh, Weird Al holding Games Magazine. Oh, uh, Games Magazine was a, a seminal part of my childhood, almost as much as Weird Al was. Uh, probably, well, more than Weird Al was, frankly. <laughs> Games Magazine set me on the course of my entire life. Right. Um, I worked for Games Magazine as a freelancer for a while when I was out of college. So when I was thinking about who I might try 
to approach that might actually do this. Weird Al was at the top of the list. In fact, I think he was the list. Right. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Weird Al or I give up. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I, there's no – who else is there? I don't even know. Uh, so I pitched the idea to Will Shorts. And Will Shorts, uh, Will Shorts, of course, is the editor of the New York Times crossword. He liked the idea enough to pitch it to Weird Al. And Weird Al responded like in 10 minutes saying, oh, I'm in. Wow. And uh, so, awesome. so it kind of awesome. came around that way. Yeah. Well, Eric, before we dive in too deep, we have so many questions about the crossword puzzle. But, Joe, I would love to hear your connection to Weird Al throughout your life. Uh, yeah. So I, I kind of, you know, grew up in a, in a sciencey, nerdy, geeky family. And so, um, I, I, I was, I was trying to remember, you know, my, my first exposure to Weird Al. And the thing I think I remember was his cameo in the first Naked Gun movie. And so I, I saw that when I was, when I was probably six or seven, uh, you know, a friend of mine had it on, on, uh, tape and, and I, I saw that. And then, you know, uh, kind of growing up, I, I would hear like, I love Rocky Road and, and those sorts of songs. And then maybe maybe around junior high, I, I started, you know, actually buying the albums for myself and um, whatnot. So I the first concert I ever saw him in was in 2001 at the Starlight Theater in Kansas City. And there was a gigantic thunderstorm uh, so it's this big outdoor amphitheater and lightning actually struck one of the telephone poles while we were oh, uh, waiting and you know out out wow. so so they 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 gathered us all you know somewhere safe and then the rain kind of subsided and al just comes out and looks at all of us he's like you people are crazy <laughs> um, and you know of course the crowd went wild but so i've I, i've seen him at, at this point i've seen him eight times in concert uh three vips so the most wow. recent concert was was actually one i think both both of you have been to the Vienna uh, show yeah. um, last year that, oh, that was yeah. just hot, hotter than anything. Um, oh, so yeah. I, I was I, I was in the front row for that one. Wow! Um, and that was that was a great experience. But yeah, so you know, I I because I've done the VIP three times, a lot of people. You know, they think that I must be like some super fan, and that like Al recognizes me if if you know I, I see him on the street or something like that. And I I, I just let them know, you know, <laughs> there's there's 150 VIPs every night, and you know there's people like <laughs> like you know Dave and Ethan that that you know have done this you know multiple times. So you know, the 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 level of fandom there, there's a whole other other tier above where I am. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're you're up there. I think I think seeing Al eight times, going to VIP three times, you're definitely up there. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll I'll be seeing him again. I, I just got another VIP for the Kennedy Center um, in October of this year. So oh, nice. I'll, I'll be yep. at that concert as well. So I'll, I'll all right try to hook up with you there. Well, that's incredible. So I love that you guys are both big Weird Al fans, and I, I know we have a lot to talk about with this puzzle challenge you guys put together. But Eric, I would love to hear about your experience writing a crossword puzzle with Al. Is even is calling it writing a puzzle? Is that the correct terminology? I would say constructing a puzzle. Okay. The first thing that needs to happen when you construct a puzzle for the New York Times, uh, for for most days, Friday and Saturday, they're themeless puzzles. Uh, but for um, for the what we were trying to do, we first had to come up with a theme uh, for the puzzle. Okay. And uh, and initially, uh, Al wanted to do um, a salute to other uh, musical comedians. Like mm -hmm. Alan Sherman, mm -hmm. and and he wanted to have Richard Cheese in there. He gave me a long list of of names that I could try to put in there. Yeah, and and I said, well, you know, I think we need something a little more wordplay oriented. Uh, it can't just be, or it shouldn't just be something just trivia. You know, this person's song from nineteen sixty nine or or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so we batted around a little bit, and uh, one idea that we floated for a while was uh, trying to come up with comedians that have laugh syllables in their name. Like Margaret Cho ends with H-O, that's ho. And we could put ho in a single box, like a rebus. Oh. And Steve Harvey has ha in his name. So we were thinking of ha and he and ho as a rebus thing. And I got very excited about this for, for a little bit because we found a very famous comedy act that has all three uh, laugh syllables in it. Ha, 
he and ho. <laughs> yeah. I, I will leave that with you for just a moment if you try to think of what it is. I can't resist okay. tossing this out as a puzzle. Okay. Uh, it, it's a famous comedy duo, I'll, I'll say. We should put in the Jeopardy thinking music for Dave and I. <laughs> I lost on Jeopardy, right? <laughs> exactly. We're going to have to ruminate on that one for a yeah. little bit. But I, I'm curious, Eric, before we even get any further, you know, how did you get into constructing puzzles? What's your background on constructing crossword puzzles? I, I, once, I mean, I've been a lifelong puzzle solver. Uh, I talked earlier about Games Magazine. I remember the moment my eyes set on Games Magazine for the first time. It was just like, that was put here on this planet for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so I, once you solve a billion puzzles or so, you can't help but want to turn to constructing them and, and, and you know, puzzling other people. Um, and so, you know, I, I just sort of naturally turned to that. I started in middle school making puzzles, terrible, terrible, terrible puzzles that had no comprehension of what a, you know, how to, to get the solver from the start of it to the end of it. Uh, it, it, it they were just terrible. Um, but I learned a lot <laughs> from reading Games Magazine then hanging out at Games Magazine. And when Will Shorts moved from the editor of Games to New York Times, I'm like, I'm going to make one crossword and sell it to him. That's all I want to do. Yeah. Uh, and I spent a summer with a with a pad of graph paper and a pencil and no real idea what I was doing. <laughs> and and just bludgeoned my way through this grid. And then I showed it to a friend and he improved it like 3,000% in an hour. Uh, and I did, yeah. in fact, sell that to the New York Times. Um, oh, but then. Cool. But then, of course, I couldn't stop, and I've had uh, 50 puzzles in the Times by now. Awesome. Wow. Uh, and it's just something I love doing. I love doing. I, I, I make puzzle events for, like, museums and, and for, for schools, and just having kids run around, solve my puzzles, and watching them have the aha moment, uh, it, it, it absolutely can't be me. Can't be beat. Um, it, it's, it's one of the thrills of my life that I'm able to do that. That's so cool. Wow. Congratulations. That sounds really cool. Yeah. yeah. And just curious, how long does it take to to write an average puzzle? I mean, New York Times puzzles are not like, you know, something that you know, pe people will spend, I'm guessing, hours trying to solve these things. They're not something that, you know, you can solve in five minutes. So <laughs> You'd be how surprised. long does it take to come up with something like that? Really? Oh, Lord, yes. I mean, I, in the circles that I float in, we're talking about people who can solve. They can solve a puzzle that I made faster than I can. <laughs> wow <laughs> wow <laughs> like by a mile faster than i can um but anyway uh, i i haven't made a traditional crossword in a while in fact i think the one with weird al may have been my my most recent one but a, a puzzle of that size a daily 15 by 15 takes about three hours once you have the initial idea okay yeah uh, you're getting all the words in place and then cluing it up incredible wow and Joe, it sounds like you're also a puzzle guy. Do you create puzzles, Joe, or do you just are you a puzzle solver? Generally, I I just like solving them. So I I do the New York Times and the LA Times crossword every day, and then you know beyond that there are um, there's sort of like a, a second level of puzzling that uh, I I would call mystery hunt puzzles. Um, so so the, uh, the you know the mystery hunt is this event that happens at MIT and it's it's kind of inspired these these types of puzzles where there's always some kind of meta thing happening in the background so you know a, a regular puzzle could involve filling in a crossword grid or putting together jigsaw pieces but the mystery hunt puzzle has something that happens after that's put together that leads to some sort of answer word or a phrase um j just as as kind of like a wink from from the constructors to the solvers that hey you, you know you figured out my uh, extra thing so mm. you might like be doing a crossword puzzle and notice that maybe some of the clues are missing a word and if you take all of those missing words maybe the first letters spell spell out the answer to the puzzle and okay. so you know that's that that's that's what these types of puzzles are generally about and and there's you know there there's generally no instructions um and and there's some sort of aha moment that you have to have at some point but you know get getting to that point is is fantastic 
And so there's, there's these things called extravaganzas, which are kind of series of puzzles like this, where there's maybe some kind of, you know, central theme. So you could have like a theme where uh, maybe maybe this extravagance is going to be about classic video games. And so you could have a crossword puzzle that, you know, you, you fill in the answers on a Pac-Man grid okay. and, you know, extract an answer somehow out of that. Or, or maybe there's a logic puzzle and all the characters are, are characters from Mario games. And, and so, you know, each one of these is going to yield an answer phrase. And then those feed into what's called a meta puzzle. And the meta puzzle, you know, it's usually a corny pun. So, um, I mean, the but besides being really good at solving puzzles, the puzzle community is outstanding at coming up with terrible puns. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I, I would say just about anything can be the subject of a puzzle. And, you know, given the people in the community, we have just every area of nerddom and geekdom is represented. You know, from The Simpsons to Magic the Gathering to obscure 80s TV shows. And, you know, now, nowadays we sort of assume that everyone has access to Google. And so that, that can add a level of obscurity if, if you know, you can, you can maybe get some clues and maybe you don't know what to do, but you just Google them and find out that they're all related to, like, ALF episodes or something like okay. that. So, <laughs> um, so, so, you know, ju just about anything can be the subject of a puzzle. And uh, uh, I, I was searching back through some of the archives of the uh, MIT Mystery Hunt, and I, I've actually found... a weird owl puzzle that I thought might be kind of suitable. So uh, do you want to bring that up? Sure. Yeah. You recreated this puzzle for us and you put it on your website. So if you go to Joe, B O H A N O N.com slash weird owl puzzle dot PDF, you can take a look at this and Joe, you've highlighted a couple of these phrases for us. Yeah. So, so to sort of set, set the stage for this, this was, you know, written as though it was like an old timey diary entry and uh, it, it, every one of these clues has a date associated with it. So there's one that says April 7th, and it says, I pray you beware of temptation, but should you feel your resolve failing, seek enlightenment from the methods in which I have so painstakingly instructed you. And while I understand that your father has vexed you greatly, I fear patricide would certainly force you to seek another op occupation. So you, you might recognize that as sort of a paraphrase of the lyrics from Weird Al's song Yoda. And, yes. and so that's, that's sort of the, the <laughs> method that you're going to take all of these, you'll associate them with a Weird Al song, and then somehow out of that you can extract uh, an, an answer. So uh, th this was part of a, a mystery hunt that was written in 2006. And, you know, that, that answer fed into one of these meta puzzles, which then feeds into, you know, sort of an end game. And just to be clear, I, you're going to a link here that says Weird Al Puzzle in the URL. That's right. Mystery Hunters appro approaching this puzzle for the first time needed to have the aha moment. Oh, you know what? All these things are describing Weird Al songs. That was not given to them <laughs> in any oh, way. Okay. That is a leap that they oh, need okay. to make. Wow. And every mystery pun puzzle has a leap of that nature right yeah so so i mean i i would describe the mystery hunt it's kind of like the olympics of the puzzling world so you know it was, it was started by some grad students at mit in 1981 and it, it was it was a lot smaller than it was today but you know the end goal there was to find a coin that had been hidden somewhere on the mit campus and this has evolved over the last 40 years to this big production where you know it people come from all over the world for this and you know it's it's like a it's been a virtual event the last few years but you know there's hundreds of teams and they they range from size you know just one person to uh so so the team that eric and i are on uh had at some point you know about 150 people on it oh wow and wow. you know there's there's multiple rounds and extravaganzas and all of these feed into some kind of meta meta puzzle and, you know, there, there's an overarching theme that's going to require skits and, and production value. So, so there have been things like Alice in Wonderland or Inception that, that these are kind of themed around. And, you know, the puzzles can be, can be very hard, and that's why you need a large team to win. Um, and, and, you know, teams generally need broad expertise. So you, you need, like, your computer programming guy or your uh, obscure 80s TV shows guy. And, 
you know, et, et cetera. Okay. Okay. So, so this, this, <laughs> this, uh, mystery hunt, you know, now, nowadays it takes place over Martin Luther King, uh, junior weekend. And it, it starts on Friday afternoon and basically continues until somebody finds the coin. So, so people are working around the clock on, on some of the larger teams and for the teams that win, it usually takes between 36 to 48 hours to, wow. to solve it. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the prize, it, it's still a, a coin, but the real, you know, prize in quotes for winning is that you get to create the next year's hunt. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, this, this is like a year long process. So, so uh, our, our team, you know, be, because of COVID, the, the hunt was virtual in 2021 and we ended up winning and that put it to us to design the 2022 hunt. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll let Eric talk some more about that. But, you know, th this was a process that took an entire year between writing the puzzles and test solving them and putting together all, all the post-production. And so this this just went off, uh, you know, uh, a few weeks ago. So, wow. Wow. So, well, before you get into the 2022 puzzle, if you guys are a team of 150 and you win, who gets the coin? Uh, lately, once upon a time, uh, just the team captain got the coin. Uh, we won back in, in 2007, and I guess whoever was captain at that time uh, has that coin. But sometime after that, the organizing team was good enough to produce multiple coins so that everybody who played a part in, in, uh, in the victory would get a coin at the end. Oh. That's what we did cool uh, this year oh very cool yeah yeah that's awesome if you're if you're on the winning team you deserve a coin it's yeah hard. <laughs> yes <laughs> sure i mean even just the the sample you guys sent us the the weird al puzzle i mean <laughs> it's hard and i'm like one of the most knowledgeable weird al fans out there and it's it's hard <laughs> <laughs> right and and you know some some of the, some of the songs that it's cluing there are very deep cuts so so these are like things that didn't even get played on the vanity tour <laughs> right <laughs> before we get too much further into the mystery hunt and and you guys and what you did to prepare for this amazing event in 2022 eric i had a few more questions about working with weird al on a crossword puzzle sure first of all you know how do you collaborate with with somebody? I, I don't know if Weird Al's ever written crossword puzzles for fun before, but how do you collaborate with someone to construct a crossword puzzle? And what kind of input are you getting, you know, from Weird Al? Is he writing all the clues, or are you guys at a collaborative process? He did write all the clues. He did. I'll, I'll get to the clues in a minute because we still don't even have our theme okay. yet. Okay. Uh, we had this we had this great idea that turned out not to work because I I just could not make it work. Uh, that, that, uh, that comedy idea where we had he, ha, and ho in the names of the, uh, right. Of right, the, right. Of the various comedians, the, uh, the, that one comedy act that has all three of them in there, by the way, is Cheech and Chong. Ah, uh, uh, okay. I just could not make a, a grid work. Uh, a, a rebus crossword is, is, uh, a much more complicated affair. And I had too many rebus squares and it was just, it wasn't going anywhere. And I worked for a Worked at it for a while, and I finally went back to Al, or crawled back to Al, and said, nope, <laughs> nope, this is not happening. And we batted around a few more ideas. I remember being at my daughter's high school, sitting on the floor of the lobby, uh, writing an email to, to to Al, and thinking, this, my life has taken a very strange turn that I'm, that I'm sitting here doing this. <laughs> Ultimately, I, I said, think of it this way. Imagine you're coming up with punny titles for a blank film festival like if you can come up mm. with with we with 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 punny type punny movie titles uh for the robot film festival or the 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 olympics film festival and you take some you know i i i suggested the vegetable film festival just by way of an example and a punny movie title that might be in the vegetable film festival is corn with the wind <laughs> <laughs> even as bad puns go that's a bad pun but i but i gave it to him just right. as an example and he said yeah but i don't want to do food because i'm always the food guy i said i totally understand think about it let me know what you think 
And he wrote me back later that day and said, what about cheese? <laughs> <laughs> I said, all right. <laughs> I woke up the next morning with to like 150 cheese movie puns in my <laughs> mailbox. Wow. <laughs> so not only did he not want to do food initially, but he did food and then he sent you 150 puns about it. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I, 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 he, he absolutely flooded the zone with cheese puns. Uh, I selected um, four of them that could work in, in a puzzle. They had to be, you know, the right length and, and they had to fit a couple of other rules that, that he didn't know about up front. So what are you going to do? Uh, so I chose four good puns and I built the crossword around those puns. So that that was his first major contribution was was coming up with the, the theme, helping me come up with the theme, and then coming up with all the theme entries. Um, I then sent him the grid and asked him to do uh, the first crack at, at, at the clues, and he did. And I don't think I changed very many things. Unfortunately, the New York Times editorial team is notorious for changing clues. Uh, and I kind of thought they'd go a little bit easier on Weird Al Yankovic and, <laughs> and celebrity uh, guests in, in general, but they did not. And uh, oh. I, I think I was a little disappointed that some of his favorite clues didn't make it. I felt bad about that. I, I feel like I should have said something to the editorial team of let this guy, you know, let it be a Weird Al puzzle. But they, they changed a few right. more things than I, was, than I would have been happy with. Uh. Uh, but he, 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 he took it in, in good spirits, and I think he was pleased with the thing in, in general, insofar as he was willing to speak to me when I wrote to him again a couple of years later. <laughs> and uh, yes, that, that's how it all came around. It was a very neat experience. I had never had a, a, one of my puzzles covered as a news event by, the, by Rolling Stone magazine before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that probably doesn't happen much. It does not happen much. <laughs> so I, I have a pretty interesting follow-up to this that, uh, you know, that the third time that I was going to see Weird Al in, uh, with a VIP pass, I was trying to think what in the world could I have him sign? Because, uh, you know, I'd, I'd already seen him twice before. And then this gift sort of dropped in my lap of a New York Times crossword puzzle. And so I, I filled out, I, I printed it out and I filled out the entire thing except for one of the answers, which was uh, Monsters, Inc. And so I, I had Al sign the crossword puzzle and he filled in the last entry in the puzzle. So, so I've got Al's signature. I still haven't gotten Eric's signature on it yet. Yeah, you keep telling me you're going to have me sign that. That you'll be the only one in the country with, with both of the author's signatures on that crossword. Exactly. Wow. Yep. Cool. Now I need that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I actually suggested to Al they should have done uh, blue HF. Um, blue HF. <laughs> That's good. That's a good one. Yeah. I love that. I I would love to see that list that Al put together. <laughs> oh, I got it somewhere. I can forward it to you. I mean, I certainly didn't delete anything. <laughs> yeah, I bet there was some gold. And I guess. For anyone who's looking for this puzzle, let, let's just say that this uh, puzzle came out in the New York Times on April 4th, 2018. There's got to be archives out there somewhere where people can look up this puzzle and try to solve it. Oh, you know, they made that puzzle available for free. And I have it on oh, my good, website good. as well. If, I, it's, I, if you go to ericberlin.com and look under the puzzle section, uh, it's there along with a lot of other of my work. Oh, awesome. Awesome. I think you should... Also, I don't know if there's a legal issue here, but you should release it with the original clues that you and Al put together. I don't think I can do that, so I think I better just leave Olaf <laughs> alone. Okay, okay. It's a good idea, and I understand where the impetus comes from, but I, I don't think I could do that. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so you put the puzzle together, and you guys are both on this team, but before we get to the 2022... How did you guys actually meet? We just on on palindrome, right? I, I didn't know you before palindrome, did I? Yeah, that's that that's correct. So so the our our, our uh, mystery hunt team is called palindrome, um, and and so every year we pick uh, a team name that is a different palindrome. So we've been uh, I prefer pie, and <laughs> Stacy's super aware pussy cats, uh, which is an amazing palindrome, by the way. Um, but uh, so I, I, I have a, a co-worker who went to MIT for grad school and he, he got involved with the team back then and he invited me to, to join. So I, I've been doing it um, since 
2013. Um, and you know, it's, it's a fantastic weekend of puzzling and, you know, you, you sort of get, get to work on some very challenging puzzles and just, just have some fantastic experiences with these, these crazy people at MIT. Before the pandemic came around and screwed everything up, yeah. uh, <laughs> the, the team would squash themselves into a classroom or two. So you get to know the people around you pretty well, uh, and, yeah. and, and work together very, very closely. And so you, you, you bond with, with your, your teammates. Uh, the, there are people who have been on palindrome for for decades. Wow, J Joe and, and 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 others. Now you mentioned palindromes. I wonder. We had a guest on the podcast back in 2020, Vince Clemente. He did a whole film about palindromes called The Palindromists. Have you guys oh, yes. seen that film at all? Yeah, I I have not seen it. Uh, I heard all about it. It was certainly made the made its waves in the the puzzle community. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. you think since I was until recently the captain of a team called Palindrome that I would run to see it, but uh, no, I, I, I'm afraid I missed it. <laughs> I, I I have not seen that. I, I I am very well aware of you know the 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 Weird Al song Bob. Yes. Um, that, that does right. does have you know many many very good palindromes in it. <laughs> well, as as Weird Al fans, you guys may want to check out the Palindromists. I don't want to ruin it for you, but there just might be a, a special guest uh, <laughs> thing that shows up in there that you that you might be interested in. That makes all kinds of sense, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So you guys are obviously fans of of the song Bob. We think we've established that. <laughs> I, I guess let's let's move on to uh, 2021. You win, and you're designing the challenge for 2022. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, well, over the course of a year, we made close to 200 puzzles. Wow! And Oof. all of them of the you know ridiculous, no instruction, what the hell is this? Need an aha to even get started? Variety. I mean, so these are very very difficult puzzles. And then, as Joe explained earlier, each puzzle has an answer phrase or an answer word, and all of those answers for a particular round come together uh, to form one final puzzle, the meta puzzle. And uh, solving a meta puzzle is a, a big deal. Uh, it advances you significantly in, in the hunt, and you tend to get a reward. It's a, you know, a, a big cheer at, at a minimum, but maybe something you get a, a video that opens up or some extra information regarding the plot line or, or, or something that marks the significance of having solved the meta puzzle. Okay. What we did this past year was a um, our theme. Joe mentioned that everything is themed. Our theme was just books in general, literature. Uh, it was a it was a trip through what we called book space, and mm -hmm. every round I'm simplifying a little bit, but every round was based on a different genre: uh, science fiction, horror, biography, self help, and so forth. And one of the rounds was cookbooks. Okay. Uh, the meta puzzle that we designed for this round, and by we I actually mean a, a very particular puzzle constructor named Andrew Esten. He designed a puzzle that uh, revolved around Weird Al songs. <laughs> you needed to have the aha that all of the answers that you're getting to all the puzzles in the round are foods mentioned in Weird Al songs. Okay. And we tested the puzzle and it was very nice and we put it into the hunt and we began to build all the puzzles around it. And a really inordinate amount of time passed before I said to myself, wait a minute. I kind of sort of know Weird Al, and we have this great <laughs> Weird Al puzzle here. What if I wrote to him, what if he, for our hunt, every time you solve a meta puzzle, you open up a video basically congratulating you um, uh, for having solved it, and, and you, you earn a, an object that you need to, to complete the, 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 the overall hunt. Uh, and I said, I wonder if, if, if Al would, would do this. And I spent... <laughs> I spent like an hour crafting my pitch, uh, <laughs> trying to explain the mystery hunt. You know, ex I want to explain it, but not too much. But but you know, I don't want to say what is he even talking about. I spent a really a lot of time on this email, and I finally sent it out. And it literally, not kidding, two minutes later, he wrote back with sure. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Al. <laughs> the graciousness and the generosity are just beyond belief. I was I was so pleased and announcing it to the rest of my team 
oh my lord, they they flipped out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the 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 answer to the round, as I say, is an object uh, that the solvers will need to to complete the hunt. And every object was a pun based off of that round. So this was the cookbook round. The object that was the the answer to the round of puzzles and was a calculated whisk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what we wanted to do, I mean, when we dreamed this up, we didn't know that Weird Al was going to be involved and we didn't know that we were going to have to fashion a calculator attached to a kitchen whisk. Uh, but that is what we did. We have, we have a, uh, <laughs> yeah. we have a husband and wife uh, engineering team on the, uh, on the team, uh, Eric and April Pinnock. And they went into their workshop and they figured out a way to attach a hot pink pocket calculator <laughs> to a kitchen whisk. <laughs> <laughs> and they sent this to me. And I also bought a toque because Al told me that he didn't have a toque. Uh, you know, a little the chef's hat thing, okay. and I sent the whole thing okay. off to him with 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 a script that I wrote. <laughs> and a couple yeah. of weeks later, he said, "Well, here, try this. I hope it works for you." And yes, it worked brilliantly. He brought a lot of polish uh, to the video. <laughs> he, you know, I, I dare say it was a funny script. I think I'm allowed to say that, even though I wrote the script. But he made it just ten times better. <laughs> And uh, it was fantastic. And dropping this on, on the solvers, all of whom, all of whom are Weird Al fans. You right. do not join the mystery hunts without that kind of geekery in your background. <laughs> and it just, it, yeah. <laughs> people were just, uh, just agog. And the people who didn't get to see it uh, during the course of the hunt, because they either didn't get to it or they didn't, they, they, very foolishly did not click on that video when it opened. Uh, we showed the entirety of it at wrap up, uh, you know, for the event. Mm -hmm. And just in, in, in Google chat or YouTube chat, people were like, well, what? I can't. And people, <laughs> Is that a Weird Al impersonator? Where did they get a Weird Al impersonator? <laughs> it was wonderful. It was just so wonderful. <laughs> You know, I've 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 described this as the hardest secret I have ever had to keep. <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh wow. And I'm waiting now for um, I'm waiting now to get uh, one final coin, uh, the same coins that we sent out to the winning team. We also sent around as a thank you to everybody who helped construct. And uh, I'm sending a coin uh, to Al as soon as it arrives. Oh, very cool. Oh, very nice. Yeah, cool. he has certainly earned it. So at what point in the year of planning did this all happen with Al? Uh, oof, that's a good question. I can look that up. If you just <laughs> hit the mental pause button for one second. While well, uh, Eric looks that up, Joe, what was your reaction to finding out that Weird Al was going to do a video for your team? You know, it's it's the type of thing that, like Eric said, you know, part of you is like, oh no, he's he's too famous, he'd, he'd never do something like that. But then you think, of course he's going to do something like that. You know, he's, uh, he, everything I know about him, he's he's just like like the nicest guy in Hollywood right yeah and you know within reason all, always willing to help <laughs> uh so that we we finalized uh that the the puzzle that used the weird al songs back in like march or so or april and it took me until june or late june to finally say wait a minute and and write to him and uh you know, then we had to actually make a calculated whisk, which is not something you do overnight. So it, it wasn't until October um, that uh, I sent him everything that he needed, and he sent me back the uh, the video a few weeks later in uh, in uh, early November. And this this video should be both available on YouTube, and I, I did post it on the on the Facebook group if you want to watch it. Yes, and it's it's such an incredible video, and I, I am curious: was the video purely a reward, or were there any? special hints or clues for something else within the video. No, it was purely a reward. It, okay. it, it added some texture to the plot of, of the hunt. Okay. Uh, as the mystery hunt has grown over the years, there's been a little more emphasis on story. Um, and so uh, these videos, uh, not just the Weird Al video, but all the videos added some layering to the, the, the story of it. Hmm. And, and uh, any, for people who watch the video, I hope this isn't too big of a spoiler, but at the end, uh, 
Weird Al's dog Sandy makes a cameo appearance. Was that in the script or was that something that Al came up with? <laughs> I didn't know he had a dog. <laughs> 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 no, he did that completely on his own. It's a wonderful little surprise. <laughs> really now that's that's not, that's not the that's not the dog from Poodle Hat, is it? No, it's not the same dog. Okay, <laughs> the dog from Poodle Hat was Bella, and that was a, that was his real dog at the time too. <laughs> you you guys are serious serious fans if you know that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, are there other celebrities that have? contributed something like this or is al unique in that way that he's helping out this really fun community i can't think of any other celebrity cameos we do occasionally get people who are famous in their field who participate in the mystery hunt mm -hmm. okay uh, i i remember there was a story going around about a puzzle based on uh magic the gathering that the inventor of Magic the Gathering got to help solve because he happened to be on a team at that time. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool. And uh, I know that um, another, you know, high geek cred uh, uh, point is um, the comic strip XKCD. Yep. Uh, and that cartoonist, Randall Monroe, is the, the captain of a team that participated this past year. Oh, very cool. So, you know, there have been uh, um, a few, uh, you know, not, not at, at a weird out yank of a level but you know notable in their fields writers and musicians and um, game designers and and the like you know it certainly sets a high bar going forward because I, I i don't know what what people are going to be able to do to top that but <laughs> i mean the 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 hunt community is endlessly creative i would not be surprised if somebody did try to top us in some way and i look forward to them trying let's see what they can do <laughs> Now, your team had the opportunity not only to win, but also then to construct the puzzle for the next year. Is there a preference? Would you guys rather construct the puzzles or would you rather participate in the actual mystery hunt? Well, per participating in the hunt is, is just a three-day event. Putting together the hunt is a year-long event. And, and so, you know, I, I mentioned when we won in 2021 that, you know, now, now I get to spend an entire year with all of you crazy people, you know, testing and writing puzzles and things like that. And, you know, that's, that's certainly good, but it, it is a lot of work that goes in. So, so you'll actually see lots of teams um, really try to uh, slow themselves down because they want all of the fun of solving the hunt they just don't want to have to write the next year so um so that, that, okay. that and you know that 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 happens just about every year that you know the the team that's went that's running it will call all of the teams in the lead and say you do realize that if you win you have to write next year and you know some 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 teams take that as a cue that hey maybe maybe we should uh back off for like an hour so <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> but I, I think, you know, on on uh, on Palindrome, we we wrote in 2008. Is that right, Eric? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it had just been it had been a long time since we had written before. And so we started putting in some serious effort into winning. And there there's just so many other teams. I, I feel like every year, you know, there's there's maybe ten or so competitive teams and it just kind of shakes out. It, it's it depends on how the puzzles shake out, who gets the right ahas at the right time. And yeah. You know, uh, from from the year that we started, like genuinely trying to win, we came in second place probably five years in a row. And wow. then we came in second in 2020. We came in second in 2019. We came in third, I believe, in 2018. Now we kept almost winning, almost winning, almost winning. So right, wow. the, the hunger to win goes up and up and up, <laughs> and now it is dissipated. For the foreseeable future, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> we have done. We have paid our dues. Yes. For anyone listening who is a puzzle lover, is this something that they could create a team and participate in, or do you have to have a connection to MIT or one of the other teams or founders? Anybody can register a team and join the mystery hunt, but you don't. If you're a puzzle lover. That doesn't necessarily mean that you are a mystery hunt puzzle lover. You can be a 
absolute diehard puzzle lover and still look at the mystery hunt and say, yeah, that's just a bit too much. Mm. I mean, I make puzzles. My focus as a puzzle maker is on uh, uh, beginner and intermediate solvers. And m the people who solve my puzzles, they are puzzle lovers. But they would be, and it's not a shame to say this, they would be lost at the mystery hunt. It's just, that's a, a completely other field of endeavor. <laughs> but, right. I mean, to, to answer your your, yeah. your very specific question, anybody can register a team uh, and join uh, the mystery hunt. And even if you don't have a team, the organizers uh, will allow you to sign up as an unattached hunter and they will try to put you uh, with a team. Oh, that's cool. So if, if, if hearing about the mystery hunt sounds good to you, you can absolutely play. Yeah, and I, I would say, you know, if, if you're wanting to you know, kind of dip your toes in these waters, but maybe not jump in the deep end right away. Um, there, there are other smaller events. Uh, there's something called puzzled pint. Um, and that, that is usually, you know, one, one of these very small extravaganzas, maybe five puzzles. I think in that case, they even give you all the instructions that you need, but mm -hmm. you know, there, there's, there's still a meta puzzle at the end and it's, it, it takes place in cities all across America. Um, and, uh, I, I don't know what, what the situation is right now with COVID, but you know, that, that's, that's a good way to sort of, sort of get your feet wet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the, 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 the mystery hunt is Everest. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. There are, there are other smaller mountains, uh, to climb as well. Many of them. <laughs> that's so fun. That's so fun. Sure. I mean, I, I, I will just say for me, I'm not ready to climb Everest. I mean, even, uh, you know, the video clue that led to solving uh the puzzle like yeah i, I recognize that these are all weird al related foods but i mean reading the explanation for the answer like there's no way i would have found that <laughs> <laughs> it's tough it's like its own language yeah <laughs> Dave and I'll be sure to share, you know, all of these links so people can can get an idea and and, and uh, figure out what we what we've been talking about this whole time and, and actually get to see it and, and watch the video. This has been so great, guys. I, I want to make sure if people are interested in finding more about both of you, uh, you each have your own website. So, Eric, we can go to ericberlin.com. Yes. And Joe, we can go to joebohannon.com. Very easy. Thank you for for that, guys. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and Joe, I wanted to just point out, I, I think that you may also be a Jonathan Colton fan. Is that correct? Did I solve that? Puzzle? That's correct. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, so, so I'll, I'll mention, you know, I, I have, I have a Pandora station that's for weird, weird Al. And I, you know, it, it played Jonathan Colton one day, I, I think the Your Brain song. And I, I was like, oh, this is fantastic. So then I created a Jonathan Colton station and it says, oh, you like Jonathan Colton? You know who you really like is Weird Al. <laughs> and so, so, you know, I, I, think, I think basically any, any comedy station I, I try eventually morphs into a Weird Al station. So. <laughs> yeah. All roads lead back to Weird Al. Guys, thank you so much for joining us and, and telling us all about these really, really unique and awesome Weird Al related experiences. This is just so cool. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, this is nice. Thank you. Thank you once again to Eric Berlin and Joe Bohannon. We can only go so deep with them on the podcast, so be sure to check out their websites, ericberlin.com and joebohannon.com. This episode is brought to you in part by Discover Darwin, promoting tourism in Darwin, Minnesota. Not only is historic Darwin, Minnesota uh, beautiful, it's also magical. Darwin, Minnesota is home to beautiful animals known as unicorns. Uh, Dave, that's that's not possible. I'm 99.27% sure that unicorns do not exist. Ah, on the contrary. It says right here that unicorns symbolize purity, freedom, gentleness, virginity, innocence, divinity, and magic. Well, that may be the case, Dave, but that doesn't mean they exist! Now tell me, Ethan, when you think of purity, freedom, gentleness, virginity, innocence, divinity, and magic, which small city in Minnesota do you most associate that with? Well, I have to admit, Darwin, Minnesota immediately comes to mind. But honestly, 
I don't know the names of many other small towns in Minnesota. So, I mean, that could just be a coincidence. Okay, okay. Let me ask you the question differently. Which small city in Minnesota comes to mind when you think of a legendary animal that looks like a horse with a single horn on his forehead? Oh, well, when you put it that way, I totally get it now. Besides, unicorns are harmless. Now, if they were were unicorns, that's what you need to be afraid of. Were unicorns? Yikes! What? Ah! So visit Darwin, Minnesota on your next expedition. Discover Darwin more than just a twine ball. And after you visit Darwin, Minnesota, be sure to visit discoverdarwin.biz. Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast is brought to you absolutely free thanks to our incredible sponsors, Burrito Burrito, Discover Darwin, and Jackson Scoggins. Our podcast is also supported by everyone in our Patreon family, with special thanks to our amazing close personal friend level Patreon supporters, Zeb, Scott, UH Jeff, Javier, Kenneth, Jake, Blair, Jared, Allison, Frank from the Bank, Adriana, and also thanks to Mike and everyone else in our pretty stinking majestic Patreon family. If you enjoy our family-friendly, wacky, Weird Al podcast, please consider supporting us at patreon.com slash 2000inch. There are awesome benefits like getting your name on the podcast and access to secret episodes. Plus, you can learn how to become a sponsor of the podcast. And don't forget to check out our official merchandise shop over at shop.2000inch.com where you can pick up our new We Hate Intern Frank line of merchandise. It makes a great gift for a cuddly kitten day. Meow. We love hearing from our listeners and other Weird Al fans, so join our Facebook community and post about Weird Al by visiting group.2000inch.com. And we also love it when we receive voicemail via our official 27-hour-a-day podcast hotline, 347 Spatula. You might even hear your message in a future episode. For everything about our podcast, including incredible past episodes and guests, be sure to visit weirdalpodcast.com or 2000inch.com. And while you are there, click on Black and White and Weird All Over bonus episodes for our special bonus episode book series, where author John Bermuda Schwartz walks us through his book page by page and picture by picture. You can keep up on new episodes, podcast news, and events by following at 2000inch on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And thank you for subscribing and leaving your awesome reviews on your favorite podcast apps. Make sure you're subscribed, because not only does it help the podcast, but it also helps you solve the New York Times crossword puzzle. Thank you once again to our guests, Eric Berlin and Joe Bohannon, and also thank you to Johnny O'Hearn for popping in. Thank you to the Grammy Award winning Jim Kimo West for our incredible podcast theme song. And thank you to Weird Al Yankovic, as this podcast probably would not exist without him. And a big thank you to all of you, each and every one of our listeners, subscribers, Patreon supporters and sponsors, and everyone else who makes our podcast possible. Thank you for choosing Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al podcast. And until next time, remember to gill and chill. You know, I do have a little bone to pick with the Weird Al Yankovic birthday smash-up. It didn't have the age I needed to send to my friend's son. Oh, really? Well, what's his age? Well, he just finished eating nothing but sauerkraut for... Oh, say no more, Dave. I know exactly how old he is. That was Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast. Episode 151 inch. Can I can I get my five bucks now? I don't want to do food because I'm always the food guy. What about cheese?